Q in C++. So we'll start. Here I have taken a class named as CQ which means circular Q and inside that I have the data members elements of 10 which is an array which would hold the elements that I'll be inserting in the Q. The data that I would be enqueuing at each time would be stored in a variable called as data and size is indicative of the size of the Q. Here I have another two variables front and rear which would, which would be used to point to the front of the circular Q and the rear of the circular Q. I have also included a constructor which would first initialize the value of front and rear to minus 1 before we run the code and also would have the size of the Q to be 5. And these are the basic functions that we perform on a circular Q. One is NQ, DQ. We check if the queue is full, if it is empty and this display function is used to display the elements that are present in the queue. So first we'll start with the nq function. Every time we insert an element in a circular queue, we must first check two different conditions. One if the queue is empty because if the queue is empty, the element that we would be inserting would be the first element in the queue and so we would have to write the code for it in a little different way. Second, we check if the queue is full. If the queue is full, there is no more vacant space to enqueue an element and so we display a message saying that the queue is full and otherwise a normal enqueuing is performed. So this condition that I've written here, if front is equal to minus one and rear is equal to minus one, means I am checking if the queue is empty. If the queue is empty, that means the element that I'm inserting in the queue is the first element to be inserted. Always the first element is inserted at index 0. So first I initialize or assign the value 0 to front and rear. So front and rear would now be pointing to index 0 of the circular queue. I'm accepting the element in the variable data. And we always enqueue elements from the rear side of the queue. So I have enqueued the element to the rare, that is elements of rare is equal to data. Elements is the name of my array and data is the element that is accepted from the user. So since rare was initially pointing to 0 now, at index 0 the value of data is stored. Now this would happen once when the queue is empty. But if the queue is full, that means I cannot insert any more elements. And so this is the condition that we use to check if the queue is full. If rare plus 1 mod size is equal to front. Now we'll understand this using an example. If this is my queue and here in case I have the size of the queue to be 6. Initially front and rare would be pointing to minus 1. But and if I have 6 elements to be inserted in the queue say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and the indices of the queue are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this is the initial condition. I have to enqueue these elements in the queue. Front and rear are initially pointing to minus 1. So the first element that is 1 that is being inserted in the queue is the first element to be inserted. So since it is the first element, that means it indicates that my queue is initially empty. So this condition is satisfied. The moment this condition is satisfied, front and rear would now point to 0. So front and rear are pointing to 0. And I have written elements of rear is equal to data. Since rear is pointing to 0, 1 is inserted here. Now, when I insert the second element, I would check if the queue is empty. Front and rear are no longer pointing to minus 1, so the queue is not empty now. Then it would check if rear plus 1 mod size is equal to front. Now the size in this case is equal to 6. Rear is pointing to 0. 0 plus 1 mod 6 is not equal to 0 since front is equal to 0. It does not satisfy this condition, so it would come to the next else part of the loop. And here again it is accepting the element. Now data will be holding the value 2. 
we are incrementing the value of rare before we insert the element by writing rare plus 1 mod size. So rare is now 0. So 0 plus 1 mod 6 which is equal to 1. So now rare is pointing to 1. And then I insert the element at the location pointed to by rare. So now 2 is inserted here. Similarly this would go on. Rare would then point here. Insert 3. Again rare would point here. Insert 4. It would point here. Insert 5. And then lastly it would insert 6. Now we see that there is no more vacant position. So the queue is full. Now if I try to insert another element. It would again check. Say I wish to insert 7 in the queue. It would again check for the condition. If front and rare are minus 1. No, front is not, front is pointing to 0 and rare is now pointing to index 5. Then it would check if rare plus 1 mod size is equal to front. Rare is 5, so 5 plus 1 mod 6, because 6 is the size of the queue, is equal to 0, which is front. Since front is pointing to 0, so this condition becomes true. And it would print the message, no more elements can be inserted, queue is full. So this is the implementation to enqueue an element in the circular queue. Now we would see how to dequeue an element from the queue. To dequeue an element also, we first check two different conditions. If the queue is empty, because if the queue is empty, there is no element that can be decued from the queue. Then we check if there is only one element present in the queue, because if there is only one element, that would be the last element to be decued. And we have to set front and rear to minus 1 to indicate that after the dequeue operation, the queue becomes empty. And else, if both these conditions are not satisfied, we simply remove the element from the queue. So this, that I, this condition that I have written here means the queue is empty. If the queue is empty, I have no element in the queue to be displayed. So it would print this message, nothing to display. Otherwise, if there is a single element in my queue, for example, again if we take a queue of size 6, if there is a single element, that means we write front and rare point to 0. And if the element is... 1. Now front and rare are pointing to the same location that is front is equal to rare is equal to 0. So this condition is satisfied. So it would print decued element elements of front. Elements is the name of my array. Front is 0. So elements of 0 is 1. So it would print 1 and again set rare and front to minus 1 indicating that the queue becomes empty once the dequeue operation is performed. Otherwise, if both these conditions are not satisfied, it would simply print the element pointed to by front and then increment front by 1. So, we can take an example again. If supposing I have three elements in my queue, rare always points to the last element of the queue. So, rare is pointing to 3. Now, we see that rare and front are not minus 1. So, it would move to the else part of the loop. Inside else, it would again check if rare is equal to front, but front is 0 and rare is 2, so it is not zero. Uh, it is not equal, so it will move to the else part of it. It would print elements of front, so it would print 1 and then it would increment front by 1, so front is equal to front plus 1 mod size. Since front is 0, 0 plus 1 mod 6. So it would move to the first location and front would be pointing to index 1 indicating that 1 is deleted from the queue. So this is the dequeue operation by which we can delete an element from a circular queue. Now we would be seeing how to display elements in the queue. Now we will be seeing about the display function. Here I have written the display function. So before we display any element from the queue, we first need to check if the queue is empty. Because if the queue is empty, there is no element present in the queue to be displayed. So, first I have taken a temporary integer variable. 
which would be used to hold the index pointed to by front but before that we check if front and rear are minus 1 because if front and rear are minus 1 the queue is empty so we are displaying a message nothing to display otherwise if the queue is not empty that means there are elements present in the queue and they can be displayed so I have assigned the index pointed to by front to temp because we always start displaying elements from the front of the queue so for this we'll take an example supposing I have a queue and these are the indices so for this queue the size is 6 and in case I have only 3 elements present in the queue 1, 2 and 3 so here front would be pointing to index 0 and rear would be pointing to index 2 now we'll simulate it now I have assigned temp is equal to front so now temp is holding 0 I am displaying elements of temp that means since elements is the name of the array Elements of 0 is 1, so 1 is displayed. Then I am incrementing temp by writing temp is equal to temp plus 1 mod size. So now temp was initially pointing to 0. Now temp has got incremented and temp is pointing here. Because I have written temp plus 1 mod size, so 0 plus 1 mod 6 which is 1 so temp is pointing to index 1 now it is checking the condition if temp is not equal to rare plus 1 mod size temp is equal to 1 and rare plus 1 mod size that is 2 plus 1 mod 6 is equal to 3 temp is 1 and this condition is 3 since it is not equal again it will go to do the next iteration so it is displaying elements of temp so 2 is getting displayed again I am incrementing temp so now temp will point here again it is checking the condition if temp is not equal to rare plus 1 mod size temp is 2 and rare plus 1 mod size is 3 since it is not equal it will go to perform the next iteration it is displaying elements of temp temp is pointing now to index 2 so elements of 2 is 3 so 3 is displayed again temp is incremented so temp is pointing here that is it is pointing to index 3 now temp is 3 and rare plus 1 mod size is also 3 since it is equal it will not perform the next iteration and it will come out of the function so now we have displayed all the elements in the circular queue this would work even if the circular queue is full so now we'll check the remaining two functions is full and is empty if the queue is full that means if again I take an example when there are no vacant positions present in the queue the queue is full so now here in this case front is pointing to index 0 and rear is pointing to index 5 because at the fifth index the last element is nq now to check if the queue is full we are using the condition rare plus 1 mod size equal to front rare is 5 so 5 plus 1 mod 6 since 6 is the size of this queue is equal to 0 and front is also 0 so since this condition is satisfied it indicates that the queue is full so this is the logic that we use to check if the queue is full similarly to check if the queue is empty we check if front and rear are minus 1 if front and rear are pointing to minus 1 that means we have no element present in the queue which means the queue is empty so today we have seen how to implement a circular queue in C++ thank you for watching please like share and subscribe our channel for more videos Thank you.